All right, all right. Pre-Prohibition style rye, legacy, all-American, time-honored family recipe. It's got a lot of words on here. Jim Beam pre-Prohibition style rye. That's next on What's on the Shelf Wednesday. What's up guys, I am Jason C and welcome back to What's on the Shelf Wednesday, the series where I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. So what's on the shelf today, requested by viewer John Cashin, the Jim Beam Pre-Prohibition Style Rye. So according to the Jim Beam website, Jim Beam Rye is a pre-prohibition style rye whiskey that pays homage to one of the family's oldest recipes and is distilled according to the same exacting standards that have governed Jim Beam for more than 200 years. Today, it's become a go-to for bartenders looking for a bolder, bygone take on whiskey with the smoother finish of more modern times. So the fact that this is strictly called out to be for bartenders doesn't give me so much hope for this one, especially since Jim Beam has a wide range of rye offerings from the higher end Knob Creek Rye, to the value focused old overhaul. So this bottle was rebranded and I think around 2015, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it went from a yellow label 80 proof rye to this green label and now 90 proof rye. There's no age statement on the label, but as a Kentucky straight whiskey, it must be at least four years old. This bottle was only 22 bucks. And at that price, you have to put it in the realm of old Forrester rye, Rittenhouse rye, old Overholt, Wild Turkey 101, and the new Elijah Craig rye, not to mention the unbreakable bullet rye there's just so much competition these days in that budget rye category that it's hard to see where this one fits, but I've always passed this one on the shelf. I've never really took a chance at this one. So let's give it a go. So before I taste this, guys, if you have any suggestions for the next What's on the Shelf Wednesday, please let me know down in the comments. You can get a shout out just like John Cashin uh, and drive the next content for the next video. So really uh, hoping to hear from you guys. Anything you want that's available on the shelf, like I said, it could be a rye, it could be a bourbon, it could be a scotch, it could be an Irish whiskey, it could be Canadian, whatever you guys want me to try. So here we go. Well, it's very bready on the nose. Yeah, this is just straight up rye bread. <laughs> straight up rye bread. Like caramel too. Definitely pick up a little bit of that Jim Beam nuttiness. It's interesting because even at 90 proof, it's got a little bit of a, of a bite to it. Uh, just a tad bit of citrus here from also that rye. But yeah, this is like a, I mean, I think it's pretty much what I expected. There's nothing off-putting about it. It's very rye bread, rye grain forward. On top of that, you got some nice caramels, vanillas, that Jim Beam nuttiness, hint of citrus, a little bit of black pepper too, probably. But yeah, that citrus note, if you've ever had Old Grandad 114 or even the Old Grandad Bonded, you know, that's a high rye bourbon from Jim Beam. And as those things get down lower in the bottle, that, it really gets bright with the citrus notes. Let's see if we pick it up here. Cheers, guys. That's, that's not, that's not what I expected. I expected to feel more punch from this one, but it was very easy. A lot of caramel, more of that citrus came through and a lot of those roasted peanut notes came through as well. Let's go for another sip. So you get the spice right on the front of the palate. A lot of spice, a lot of caramel vanilla. It's very sweet. A lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna be actually. It's kind of a nice sipper. I mean, for 22 bucks. Oh, okay. All right, rye spice is coming, it's coming back. It's like, you know what, Jason, you wanna feel the rye spice? Here you go, try this. All right, let's try it again. So right in the beginning of the palate, you get this nice burst of rye spice, it's there. It's a little bit tingly on the tongue, not much. Usually I like to feel that tingle, especially from a rye. Again, this is 90 proof, it's not. I feel like it's, it's, it's unfair to compare it to an old Forrester or Rittenhouse or one of those, because it's those are 100 proof, even Wild Turkey 101, right? It's one of my favorites. But for a 90 proofer, it does have a little bit of a lingering spice presence. It just takes a little bit of time for it to develop. You know, if you take a quick sip, then you're like, oh, where's the rye spice? And you just keep going back for more. I don't think you'll ever get it. 
it's when you pause and let the rye spice kind of come to the, uh, you know, right on the finish there. Another sip. Yeah, there's, it's actually pretty nice. I am, I'm not mad at this one. <laughs> I mean, 90 proof. Again, front of the palate, little burst of, oh, and there's that after lingering spice to it. That's crazy how it does that. So that lingering spice kick that it has, you know, like I said, it takes a little while to develop, but on the front of the palate, you get a little bit of that rye spice burst, a little black pepper, but then it's all citrus, peanut, caramel, vanilla, a little bit of that rye bread as it works its way back, more of the, uh, more of the citrus develops. And then if you wait just a little bit longer than you would expect, that rye spice burst kind of comes back, which is, that's actually one of my favorite features in a whiskey is when you just kind of wait and then all of a sudden you get this finish on the very, very, very end. All right, so real quick, I wanna compare it to the new Elijah Craig rye that a lot of people seem to be going crazy over. Again, that was pretty much developed for bartenders as well, kind of like this one, that one's 94 proof. Let's do a quick comparison. Okay, and we're back. That's my, uh, my game show voice. Okay, so color difference. Elijah Craig rye is definitely a little bit on the darker side, which indicates it might be a little bit older. The Elijah Craig Rye literally comes off like a bourbon on the nose. There's so much vanilla, caramel, a little bit of like vanilla cream. Again, it's interesting when you compare because Heaven Hill has a little bit of a nutty characteristic to their to their bourbon as well. I just feel like, or their, their whiskeys overall, I just feel like you get a little bit more honey with the Elijah Craig as well. Yeah, so comparing the noses, the Elijah Craig feels heftier and possibly older, which I think it is older, but let's go for a sip of the Elijah Craig. So I think I reviewed this one last year in January. I said that for a rye whiskey, this has like no finish whatsoever. It really doesn't, even at 94 proof. I'll say the flavors are probably richer and it's, it feels more viscous on the palate, even only four proof points higher than the uh, Jim Beam Prohibition uh, style rye. Now let's go to the Jim Beam. Well, that's surprising. I actually like this better than the Elijah Craig. It just has more stuff going on in it for a rye whiskey. It's got pepper, it's got spice, it's got a lingering finish to it. I feel like this would actually hold up better in cocktails than the Elijah Craig rye. The rye to me, for Elijah Craig, it just, there's nothing going on, it just kind of dies. The one thing the Elijah Craig rye has going for it is that there's definitely some older whiskey in here, I think. It just has a more rounded flavor profile, but there's absolutely no rye spice here at all. I mean, there's rye flavor, but I want that little spice kick. Like if you put this in a cocktail, the cocktail's gonna kill that whiskey. I feel like if you put this in a cocktail, the Jim Beam Prohibition, you'll still get some of that spice in that rye. The thing about Jim Beam pre-Prohibition style rye, while I do think it's pretty damn good for the price, I still don't think it has enough to take down bullet rye. Bullet rye is the, my goodness, it is the staple among staples among staples at bars, uh, people's homes, uh, cocktail creators, bullet rye is just, uh, it's a beast. It's an absolute beast of a rye. But if you don't like the bullet profile, you know, and you are a fan of Jim Beam, the Knob Creeks, and, and you're a fan of even Old Grandad and uh, Old Grandad 114 with that high rye mash bill, there are similar notes in here. And I feel like if you're gonna use that for cocktails, you guys can get this for 22 bucks. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's not the best rye I ever had. I'll still take Wild Turkey 101, Old Forester Rye, Rittenhouse, uh, you know, over this any day of the week. But if you're in that budget category looking for a rye with a little bit more spice to it, especially when you compare it to this Elijah Craig rye, I think it could be a hidden gem for you. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching this review on What's on the Shelf Wednesday as we took a look at the Jim Beam Pre-Prohibition Style Rye Whiskey. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Remember to leave a comment below if you have any ideas of any whiskeys that you see on the shelf that you would like me to review. Uh, and as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.